Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video on phase changes and heating curves. Um, we've done phase changes and heating curves in class, but this is a, a recap. And in order to understand heating curves, we must, must understand the process of phase changes. Now, we have melting over here. Now, melting typically, as we know, is from solid to uh, liquid, right? And we have boiling, which is typically liquid to gas. Now, we can also use the term vaporization for boiling. Okay, so um, we're going to keep that in mind. And one that we tend to forget sometimes is called sublimation. Now, sublimation happens when you have a solid going directly to a gas, skipping the liquid phase. Now, two classic examples of sublimation would be for dry ice, which is um, CO2, solid, okay, and it goes straight to the gas phase, okay? And another example would be iodine solid. If you have iodine solid and you leave it in a container, it will eventually go also to the gas phase. So that's two examples of sublimation. Um, in the reverse of this, in blue, we have condensation, where you have a gas forming a liquid. So we're going from a gas to a liquid. And we also have freezing, which we're very familiar with, freezing, solidification, or crystallization, where a liquid turns to a solid. And there's also another phase, which is the opposite of sublimation, that's called deposition, where you have a gas going straight to the solid phase, skipping once again the liquid phase. And the classic example of deposition would be a fire extinguisher where the CO2 gas inside comes out as foam and uh, basically a solid form. Um, guys, I want you to keep in mind and take a look at these pictures here. Now we notice that solid has a regular geometric structure to it, a regular geometric pattern to it, but as more heat is being added as it goes to a liquid, the particles are moving around, getting a bit more random, and as the liquid turns to gas, you notice that the gas particles are all over the place and um, moving in a much more random fashion. Okay? All right, so we're going to move on in a second. Now, I have over here that separation represents an endothermic process. Okay? And simply what I mean by that is, if you have a solid, folks, all right, and you're changing it to a liquid, all right? You have to add energy to do that, okay? That solid has to absorb, okay, a certain amount of energy in order for its particles to separate. Likewise, if you have a liquid and you're turning it to a gas, okay, that liquid has to absorb a certain amount of energy for the particles to separate even further. Now, an example I'm using over here, you can think of... Um, martial arts where this person wants to break the board the board has to absorb a certain amount of energy in order for its particles to separate okay so in order for particles to separate in terms of phase in terms of our heating curves okay absorption of energy must take place for particles to separate all right okay so that's what i mean by that and we're moving on okay now, on all heating curves, the, the diagonal lines, okay, they represent one phase only. So these are diagonal lines right here, and they simply represent one phase only. So at the first diagonal line in the bottom, we just have the solid phase, okay, of ice. We're doing water in this sense. Um, this diagonal line in the middle, okay, will be just liquid, all right? And this diagonal line over here would just be gas or steam, okay? And at the horizontal lines, okay, that represents a phase change. So we have two things to consider, okay? Horizontal lines, okay? Um, the first horizontal line down here, we have ice and water in equilibrium. And at this horizontal line over here, we have liquid and gas in equilibrium, Okay? And the, right here will be our melting, and over here will be our boiling, okay? And 
Another very, very, very important fact we must uh, remember that we did in class already is the definition of temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a substance, okay? And that helps us out later on when we get to um, heat equations, knowing the definition of temperature, okay? All right. Now, you can be asked certain questions in terms of the heating curve and cooling curve. Um, the math is not complex. The concepts also are not complex. But we must know also what happens in terms of potential energy and average kinetic energy in relation to the heating curve. All right. Now, we said before we have diagonal lines, right? Okay. Now, at these diagonal lines for the heating curve, our temperature is doing what, folks? Our temperature is, yes, our temperature is going up. And it just so happens, whatever your temperature does, your average kinetic energy will also do. So if you ask a question, what's happening in terms of average kinetic energy, okay, on a heating curve at a diagonal lines, you simply say your kinetic energy is increasing. How do you know that? Because your temperature is increasing, and you're done. Okay, now it just so happens that I have this memory device right here. That if you have one of the energies doing something, the other one will be resting. Okay, so if your kinetic energy is going up or going down or doing something, your PE, okay, your potential energy will be constant, will be resting. Okay, all right. Now, if we take a look at the horizontal lines, guys, all right, where we are freezing and melting, we have condensation and vaporization taking place at the horizontal lines, and we look across at the temperatures, you notice that the temperature is not going up, it's not going down, it's staying constant. So the horizontal lines, if temperature is constant, our kinetic energies will also be constant, okay? So for heating curve or cooling curve, at a horizontal line, your kinetic energy will be constant. But in terms of the potential energy, okay, potential energy is now resting now, it's doing something. What is it doing? Now, if, for example, on a heating curve, you're melting something, right? You're separating particles. We just said you need to add energy to separate particles, all right? So your potential energy is increasing okay, on a heating curve, all right, in order to separate particles, okay? And that also goes over here in terms of um, if you're going from a, a liquid to a gas, you have to add energy in order to, for the particles to separate. And since it's at a horizontal line, our kinetic energy is constant, our PE, our potential energy is going up to separate those particles, all right? Okay. Now we move to a cooling curve, all right? is basically the same concept as a heating curve, all right, but this time we are losing heat, all right, we're cooling down. So we're starting with gas, okay, we're losing heat, and as the heat's being lost, the particles come closer and closer together, all right, so if you go from a gas to liquid, and then we will eventually go from liquid to a solid, all right? So if we want to analyze what happens in terms of kinetic energy, we do it like this. We look at our graph, we say to ourselves, okay, good, we're losing heat. So at horizontal lines, all right, we would expect if we're losing heat, our temperature to decrease, so our kinetic energy also decreases. And we said since our kinetic energy is doing something, the potential energy would be constant. Okay? Now, at the horizontal line, there's a diagonal line over here. I think I said horizontal. This is my mistake right there. Okay, at this horizontal line right here, all right, we have constant temperature. So if your temperature is constant, your Ke will also be constant. Okay, so at the horizontal line right here, okay, we have constant temperature. All right, temperature's not going up. It's not going down. Okay, now what's happening in terms of potential energy? Now, since the particles are coming closer, okay, 
energy is being lost okay energy is being lost in these cases if you're going from a gas to a liquid or from a liquid to a solid all right so since energy is being lost your pe your potential energy will be going down so once again at the diagonal lines okay your kinetic energy is going down for a cooling curve all right and your potential energy is constant at the horizontal line your kinetic energy is constant and your potential energy is decreasing now don't just guess these things folks analyze it in terms of what's happening in terms of particles are they coming closer together or are they separating if they're separating energy is being gained if they're coming closer together energy is being lost okay and uh, last slide right here um once again analyze what's happening in terms of your particles remember your phase changes um, the questions they ask you in terms of um, the heating curve and cooling curve and phases are very, very basic, very, very simple. Um, they can also ask you questions about in terms of a certain amount of time passed, like how much energy does it take for you to melt something or, or um, boil something. You just look at the graph, you, you go from there. Okay, all the substances and the phase changes are there for you from the graph you have to know where each thing is you have to know if energy is being absorbed you have to know if, or if energy is being released okay but other than that it's a pretty simple process with phase changes and and um, heating curves so this is a brief video just to recap uh, what happens in terms of phase changes and heating curves i hope it was a help and as always hard work plus sacrifice equals success all right take care